This is the ARP 1601 sequencer. It was developed in 1976. Uh, I bought this one in 1977. I used it for about 10 years and sold it to a friend of mine, Ken, who has been keeping it in good condition since then. Over time, uh, it did have some repair issues. Um, the clock didn't work. The uh, sequence wouldn't step except in random mode uh, and that was a function of the clock having a problem. Um, I was able to repair it and so I wanted to do this uh, demo of the 1601 sequencer along with the ARP 2600 and we're using the ARP 2600 as our voice um, and we're also using um, uh, digital delay from the Swiss Daisy DSP which you can't quite see um, but that's our digital delay and so let's take a closer look at the features of the 1601 sequencer first of all it's a 16 step sequencer uh, you can also configure it to be uh, a two output eight step sequencer um, you can run it in either sequential or random mode. It's got um, three buses, uh, gate buses, which are uh, switched with the three positions of these switches. There are 16 switches. Um, gate bus one uh, is uh, routed into a, an AND uh, logic that will combine with the clock and it will only send a, a gate when the switch is up. So if we took these down Or if we put these up, uh, gate bus two is available for general use. Um, gate bus three uh, is auto automatically routed into this switch, and either it does nothing in the middle position, it will electronically press this step button in the upper position that has the effect of skipping the step. Uh, and finally, uh, in, in this position, it will press this reset button. So if we wanted a four-step sequence, we could have gate bus three uh, in reset mode, and step five would be the reset. If we wanted six steps, we would set the gate bus three here. Um, the on-off control is a start-stop control. In trigger mode, it toggle, toggles between on and off, start and stop. In gate mode, as long as you have this pressed, uh, either with the button or electronically through this jack, it's going to run the sequence. Um, this is the clock section. The clock uh, frequency is controlled here. You can also uh, modulate that frequency uh, with this fader. And for instance, if you had it in this position and you had gate bus three routed into here, uh, then everywhere the gate bus three was set, it would it would do a swing. So let's just try um, gate bus three uh, and gate bus three. This won't be musically coherent, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And I haven't got this 
gate bus 3 routed here, so let's do that. And again, it's not musically coherent, but it does demonstrate um, the fact that you've got control over the frequency and swing is one of the great applications for that. Uh, finally, the pulse width modulation. Um, and we heard that a little bit earlier, but let's just play that real quickly to see how musical it can be. You've got a, a tight clock going on here. And as you adjust the width of the clock, it will change the width of the gate and it'll change how long the, um, the gate output, how long the envelope is triggered. Finally, you've got the output section. There are a, a, there's a mult. Uh, there are two outputs, um, and there are two quantizers. And let me see if I can briefly demonstrate this. Um, what we're going to do is turn on the tone, open the filter. And then as I move this slider from the full down position, you can hear it running in um, half steps. So that's the quantizer. And there are, are two of them. Um, finally, we've got the keyboard output that's coming from up here, and it's added here to the uh, control voltage in, and it's summed with the output of the sequencer so that we can transpose the sequence. And let's just do an eight-step sequence. So that's all of the controls that you have on the sequencer, and that's the basic demonstration. The second half of the video will just talk briefly about the, the voice that I'm using here. And that voice is the ARP 2600. And you've got two oscillators being used. There's also a third oscillator that's routed through the lag that's a drone. And I've got control over the output of the uh, delay here with this voltage output. This is the delay going into the ring modulator used as a VCA. and it gets routed to the output over here along with the voice itself. This is the output of the voice from the VCA that's going into the delay. And that's the basic setup. It's also got uh, an LFO being routed into the filter so that it will ebb and flow a little bit. And that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe. Thank you.